This is Gary Holt, guitarist for Exodus, and welcome. In this DVD, I'll show you some of my favorite licks, some advanced variations on them that I've built a 20 plus year career on. Career on. Career on. Career on. Before we begin, uh, let's tune up, shall we? I'll, I'll give you an A note here. <laughs> Got that? Let's begin. Uh, I'm just kidding, sorry. Don't mean to yank your chain. Here's an A note. begin with some licks that were actually the first lead licks I had ever learned and these have been around since the dawn of time as far as heavy metal and hard rock is concerned and you know we have Jimmy Page pretty much the thing for these but since him everybody from Michael Schenker to Frank Marino to Robin Trower to Zach Wilde have been just you know destroying people with these same licks so you know let's get started and you know I'll show you what I like to do with them. <laughs> The Jimmy Page Lick, cornerstone of all great rock solos. Three notes, simple and effective. <laughs> A little faster. A little faster still. A lot faster. Twelfth fret position. B in the E strings. I like this note better than this. Gives each note their own finger and a lot faster that way. A little bit faster. Speed it up a bit. Speed it up a lot. All right. Fifteenth fret position, same two strings. Speed it up. Speed it up a bit more, shall we? Let's go crazy. Take it all the way up to the 19th fret, to the high E note, you know. A little 
faster. A lot faster. There you have it. String them all together, something like this. Now I'm going to show you some more advanced licks I like to use, some diminished, some harmonic minor stuff, and a couple of different variations you can string together to make some pretty killer solos. So get to work. <laughs> Let's get on to ascending and descending diminished licks A and B. Ascending means up, descending means down, in case you didn't know that. All right, let's start with the first one. It's one pattern, just gradually moves up to the next string, and it's really simple but strung together. It's really cool. All right, and we're going to start here on the D string at the ninth fret position since it seems I've recently discovered that I don't know my frets, okay? Even with my fancy Scooby-Doo bat stickers on here because I have no inlays, all right? So here we go, we'll start right here. It's simple, just like this. Turn the distortion down a little bit here, make it a little cleaner. One more time. Okay. Then you move the same pattern up to the G string, ninth fret. Leave the bend out, I'm just messing around. Okay, next thing, next string, B, same thing. Okay, now we move on to the E, but you actually move down one more fret, down to the eighth fret, all whole steps. Okay, it's that simple. Now you put it all together, it's like this. And I like to slide into it with a couple of notes instead of just starting. I like to. So you can do it or not do it, it's up to you. But it's like this. A little slower. Okay, it's all pull offs, hammer ons. And you can pick them if you want, you know, once you get up the dexterity for it. Like okay. That's simple. So let's move on to descending lick B. All right, the pattern for that is like this. I'll play it up to speed once. Here. Okay, I'll break it down now. Same exact fingering position as the ascending lick, but you start off like this. Okay. Move to the next string, back down to the B. Okay, to the G is your lead off string now. To the D. That's your end there, so it's like this. Up to speed, it's like this. Okay, I'll run the two together for you here. It's like this. Diminished licks A and B, ladies and gentlemen. Sending and descending diminished licks C and D. Let's get these out of the way, shall we? All right, same exact pattern as the first time. You know, the first one was. Okay, the only difference this time is different fret positioning and you're actually, you know, shifting where your hand is located. And we're starting at the seventh fret. Okay, second step, you move to the D string at the sixth fret. La 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 la. Okay, then you move to the fifth fret on the G string and it's all whole steps. Then you go to the B string 
at the ninth fret position exactly as done prior. You know. Then to the eighth, same as the last on, on riff A. Now you put it all together, it's like this. Okay, crank it up a little bit. Okay, that's simple. One more time. All right, that's ascending lick C. All right, uh, descending diminished lick D. Descending, once again, uh, that means down. All right, I'll play it up to speed. It's like this little slide in it, which makes it really cool. It's got a nice flavor to it. It's like. All right, do it again. All right, it's really cool. It's one of my favorites. Now I'll try to break it down slow for you. It's like this. First part. All right, and it slides down to the A, A note. All right, that's at the 10th fret. All right, try to extend it a little bit here. Try to slow it down for you. This one's like easier to play fast, actually, so this is the hard part, playing it slow. Okay. Faster. All right, there you go. Now, um, if I can do this without blowing it, I'll try to string them together. There you go. This is C and D together. There you go. Cool stuff. Now, the same patterns I've just shown you in diminished licks A, B, C, and D, ascending and descending, can be applied to other scales as well. You know, it's the same little note pattern. But I'll show you a, a harmonic minor version of. It's like this. Okay. A little bit faster. A little faster. A lot faster. All right. That's the ascending harmonic minor. I'll show you a descending run you can use with the, the ascending run, but um, you can make up your own. You, know, it's, you, you should get the drift now, what I'm talking about here. So um, the descending one I have for you is like this. OK, I'll play it a little slower. Once again, it's one of those ones kind of hard for me to play really slow. It's easier fast. I get confused and lost and don't know what I'm doing when I play it slow. But I'll try for you. Here we go. All right, try it faster. There you go. It's probably a little different than the first one I played. Once again, playing it slow is tougher, but you know, you could mix it up any way you want. You know, just slide, do whatever, and uh, tear it up, you know? All right, now on to the fun stuff, whammy bar. All right, I've been using these infernal things for many, many years, and, uh, you know, while sometimes I watch people with their tunematic bridges and there's guitars or strings are changed in like five minutes and I'm dealing with these floating bastards, you know. They're a lot of fun, you know, and I can't see myself ever not having one. So I'll show you some examples of some of my favorite bar squeals and noises that I like to do. And, you know, and everybody does the typical, you know, you know bar drops, but, uh, and everybody knows the typical, you know, well, I think everybody knows, but, you know, I'll show you some other ways to do it, like uh, your, your squeal, right? You know, you grab it at the the 10th fret, or you can grab it at the 15th as well. You know, pull it up nice and high, start low, it's really cool. But when you grab the G and the B string, you get this like kind of sci-fi spaceship sound because the strings are oscillating at different pitches, and it's really cool. It's like, Boom. 
one of my favorite things to do. And uh, another trick I like to do is just rapidly pull the high E off the edge of the fretboard while I drop the bar. It's really cool stuff. <laughs> And, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, when I first was doing that, they thought I was, like, tapping the pick on it, but nah, it's just grabbing it. You can do it on the B soon, too. It's a little fuller pull, further pull, but... Like that. And, um, you know, anywhere you can grab a pinch harmonic, you know... Uh, manipulate the bar, you know, I like to grab it right at the 12th on the G. All right, and you're gonna, there's no limit to what you can do with these things, you know, people ask how you get these tortured sounds, well, you have to torture it, that's how you do it, you know, you want torture, you've got to commit some heinous acts, so, you know, you slap the thing to make it vibrate, you know, like... Beat it with your right hand. And then the really extreme stuff, you pull this thing back and bury it to the body until your strings hit the um, 20 second fret like this. Yeah. Have fun. When it comes to warming up, I don't really have a, a method. Like a lot of guitar players do a lot of exercise or anything. You know, I just, I just play until I'm warmed up, so I don't really know what to tell you. You're going to have to figure this one out on your own. Only thing I can tell you is that with Exodus, you know, everything is so rhythmically based. You know, I have to make sure my right hand is more warmed up than the left before I go on because, you know, it's, I don't care what lead I play, if I can't keep up with the right hand, you know, people are going to throw stuff at me. So, you know, I just, I'll stand in the wings backstage and just, you know, chunk notes, you know, like. <laughs> and I'll do stuff like that until my arm falls off, and then I'm ready to go on stage. And in the middle of that, you know, I might, you know, play a couple of licks or two, but you know, that's all I pretty much do to get ready to play live. Okay, when it comes to rhythm guitar playing, you know, the most important thing is strength. You know, uh, it's all in the right hand and you have to really build up the endurance for it. Otherwise, you know, if you're doing some seven minute long, you know, thrash metal epic and halfway through you, you just don't have the, the stamina anymore. You're gonna, your chops are gonna falter and you're not gonna sound as crushing as when you started the song. So you really have to push yourself. It's like being an athlete, you know, it's so much more important in a band like Exodus than it is to play lead, is being able to really maintain the level of, you know, aggression throughout the song. And, um, you know, some examples and uh, advice I give you is like just on right hand technique is getting the, the chunk, you know, finding the right home, the sweet spot for your right hand on the strings. You know, the old school way to do it is mute right on the bridge, you know, like, here's an example, you know, just. Let's see, I like, to, I like to choke up a little more. You have to be really careful not to push the strings sharp, but it, it sounds a little more percussive. It's like this, you know. Versus. See, it's way beefier and chunkier. And uh, some down picking advice. People ask how you build up the speed, you know, just practice, you know, that's all I can say. Just... But I'm far from the fastest, and I actually have a couple of cheats that I do, and people don't really notice this because it works really well. Like, I'll give you an example of the song Verbal Razors on Fabulous Disaster. It's not straight down picking, it's alternate and down picking. It's like this. A 
And when you're playing the riff, you can't really tell us. Okay, uh, my preferred weapon of choice amplifier wise is the PV Triple X. A lot of different modern high gain amps on the market, but for me at least, that's the best one. Nothing else has sounded as good, at least for Exodus, you know. Eel 34 power tubes and straight in, no, no need for anything. And, uh, and uh, these are my signature uh, Bernie Rico Jr. Vixen Flying Bs. Most people know that I love these things, right? And um, they're the best guitars made, period. And, you know, I'm biased, but I love them. And uh, as you can see, I have the special Batwing Scooby-Doo Halloween sticker inlays because I have no inlays and I thought it would probably be helpful for someone to see what fret I'm playing at and uh, for proof you can see where I have plucked the stickers that were small enough to fit in the smaller frets off these Scooby-Doo stickers. I couldn't put the mystery machine on there, it's too big. Well maybe up here, so, no it's still too big. That's uh, my one of my deluxe models with the green Quilt top, trans green, it's available in trans red as well. Seymour Duncan pickups, Dean Markley strings, basic stuff, simple rig. And uh, there's my pedals, some of them that I use. Uh, I'm madly in love with my homebrew electronics pedals. This is my Medicine Ball Wah pedal. Power Screamer, Uno Moss preamp, and then the two custom ones they were kind enough to make for me, my uh, San Francisco 49er. Mimic 2 delay analog delay pedal, which rules, and my parental advisory psilocybe phase shifter, and my old standby, the Boss Octaver, which I love. Can't live without that. Foot switch for the amp, and basically what you're looking at here is my onstage amp rig. Only difference is everything's in a rack, you know, the heads, and you know, I have a monster power supply, and um, you know, Nady Wireless, and that's everything. That's my onstage rig, my studio rig, everything. And of course, the stickers. <laughs> okay, thanks for stopping by. I hope you learned something along the way and your lead and rhythm playing blossom under my mighty tutelage of the black realm. So remember, play within your abilities. Don't try to play above them. Better to play slow and cleanly than fast and sloppy. And remember, most of all, Always strike from the high guard. <laughs> Alright, bonus. I'm gonna teach uh, I'm gonna correct a few a uh, couple of little misconceptions on how to play a couple of classic Exodus riffs. Everybody gets it wrong. So um, for those of you who think you know how to play it, play the riff to Bond by Blood. Wrong. Everybody plays it like this. They go. No, there's a hidden E note in there. Go. And the pull off. Good. Everybody misses that. So I'm sure you did too. So go stand in the corner. Now the other thing, uh, Piranha. Play the rip to Piranha and play it correctly. Wrong. It's like this. Everybody misses the hidden E in that as well. It's like... Everybody misses that. Everybody go. There you go. No love.
Let it roll, all right? Ah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was almost there. Okay. Yeah. Was, ah. Ah. No, it should do is like every run is missing like notes and you got to send in your redemption <laughs> card to get the extra missing notes and it costs money. All right. Okay. <laughs> Makeup. Um, <laughs> Makeup. Hold on, hold on. Let me. Mm. I'm gonna give my slide guitar clap. <laughs> Aluminum cans don't work. I need a beer bottle. Ah, oh, it's okay to ah. DV, this, oh, God damn it! I totally almost had it. I'm gonna have to stab someone with my sword. All right. I cannot stress the importance of rhythm playing enough. Ah. This is Gary Holt from Exodus, and welcome to Thrash Metal Boot Camp. Now drop it. Give me twenty, Private. <laughs>